helps if I turn on helps if I turn on the actual microphone. I think what I was saying was good morning to everybody out there this morning. Um, nice to see all of you guys out there. Connor White, uh, Vincenzo Romano, uh, Simon Parry, Dan MacAdam, uh, James Rabbi. Uh, great to see you guys there. I'll tell you what this this thing of turning on the mic in the morning. You know what I mean? When the music is playing, I'm thinking everything's great. I've got the sound, everything's working for me, and I forget to just lean over and just click that button to turn the mic on. Um, went through a phase of doing that, I think, last year as well. And Steve Oakey used to send me a reminder. He'd text me and he'd say, James, turn on your uh, turn on your mic. Make sure you don't forget to turn on your mic. So, yeah, user error, as they say. Hands up, my fault, can't help it. Uh, what I was saying was, uh, I've got a pretty hectic day on today. I, I've got quite a bit on after the live cast. I've got a couple of private meetings. Then I've got an opticians meeting. Then I've got to go to my... Uh, opticians meeting, an opticians appointment. Then I've got an appointment with my physio. And then in the afternoon, I've got a couple more uh, online online meetings. So busy, busy kind of a day for me today. What have you got on? What are you doing today? Are you out on site? Are you doing a rewire? Are you changing over a consumer unit? Uh, are you sat in the office doing some, some paperwork? Are you working on your marketing? What you got going for you today? What are you actually doing? Just type in and, and give us a shout and let us know. Uh, so good morning to everybody who's joined us so far. I'm sure, as usual, as the morning progresses and people wipe the sleep from their eyes, there'll be a few more uh, joining us. This morning, we're going into part two of the Google My Business. That's what we're going to be looking at. Um, last week, we took a look at it. We'll, we'll, uh, we're going to be carrying this theme on for at least another two weeks. So this week and next week, uh, we've got a little bit more on Google My Business. It is a relatively important part of your marketing journey. It's the very first thing that we talk about when you join the toolbox. You get a small series of emails that show you how to set up your basic listing. Now, there's no point in us going through that all again on a on uh, a live cast because it's uh, relatively simple to do but it's something that you have to do you've got to go and claim your claim your listing so google my business is what we're talking about we talked about it last week we are uh, going into part two this week and there'll be further uh, talks on it next week as well uh, so that you can get this right you can optimize it right and make it work for you in your business nice thing about google my business is it's one of those areas that it's not about how much money you spend OK, uh, what it is about is it's how much effort you put into it. And if you put a little bit more effort in than your local competition, then you will rank better than your local competition. It is as simple as that. Um, you know, if you're if your local competition, just go and claim their listing and do nothing more with it, which is what most people do. You know, many people don't even claim their blinking listing. They, they have a listing. They appreciate and they know they have a listing. But the only reason they have a listing is because somewhere along the line, Google discovered them, Google found them, and put together this generic listing for them. But most people don't even go and claim that listing as theirs. Um, but that puts you a little bit more ahead of the uh, the others. But then once you've claimed it, you can optimize it. And those are the things we were talking about last week and we're going to continue to talk about this week, how you can optimize your listing to actually rank higher. And remember, they call it the three-pack for a reason. And the reason is only three uh, people show in that top listing. And it's a you know it's a bit of a mission to get up into that top three, but very satisfying when you do. Um, and it's not as, you know, yes, there's a bit of effort goes behind it, but it's not as difficult as most people would imagine. And again, it's not about cost. It's not about paying for it. It's about putting in a little bit more effort than your, your competition and doing some small things and carrying out some little tweaks and tricks that we talked about last week and we're going to talk about this week in order for you to rank on the uh, the Google My Business. So uh, that's what we're looking at uh, this week. Again, as usual, I don't have to remind you, but I do every single week. I do this. I, I go through it. You know, do not be afraid to ask questions. If you have a question, get the question in. Now, while we're online, while we're on here, while we are live, is a great opportunity to ask the question. There is no such thing in the toolbox as a daft question. The only daft question is the one that you leave unanswered. So we'll leave it at that for this week. Um, and then we're going to we're going to look at some of the housekeeping bits and pieces in a moment. As you uh, as you know, that's the normal form. But let's have a quick look and see who else has joined us so far this morning. Uh, if anybody, uh, people saying that I haven't uh, got sound. Hopefully, I've resolved that for you now, guys. My uh, uh, my stupidity. I didn't turn the microphone on. Completely my fault. Um, Mark Horsfall has joined us. Great to see you there, Mark. Uh, Connor says, paperwork for me today, as well as looking after the kids. The joys of the summer holidays, mate. Um, 
I do love it actually. I love spending time with the boys. But um, yeah, looking after the kids, cool. Martin Scarf has joined. Nice to see you there, Martin. Vincente says he's got a BNI meeting. Uh, then he's got a site meeting. He's chasing some payments. Always a good use of your time, uh, chasing money that you're owed. Uh, speaking about BNI, guys, I have to go. <laughs> have a great day. At least you dipped your head in, my friend. At least you dipped your head in. That's great. Which reminds me, guys, because the, the rules, as you know, for our Wake Up Wednesday are if you want a copy of a video of the Wake Up Wednesday, you have to attend, even if it's just while you're on your way out to, to your BNI meeting. You've got to just pop in, say hello, whatever. But then afterwards, if you want, you can request a copy of this, this meeting or this uh, live cast. They come down. You know, I take them off of the site about an hour or so. Uh, sometimes a little bit longer, but an hour or so after we play them out, after we do the live cast, these disappear. But if you've been here, if you've been in attendance and you want a copy of the uh, the recording link, then you simply have to email me or private message me. Do not post it here because once this disappears, I don't see it. It's gone. Um, I don't see the comments. But I do have a copy of the video of the live cast, so I can uh, I can send you a link to that if it's something that you want. Thomas Hatton has joined. Uh, good morning to you, sir. Um, right, okay. So, uh, looking at some of the housekeeping guys, reminders of things that we are doing within the toolbox. So, every Monday morning, we have, sorry, every Monday morning, every Monday evening, we have our member Q&A. Uh, and our member Q&A is your opportunity to come along and ask any questions that you have with regards to your marketing, with regards to your business, or indeed just the membership of the toolbox. It's a great opportunity on a Monday evening, half past seven, here on this channel, to get on and to uh, ask any question you want regarding your marketing. If you're stuck on something, if you're planning on trying something, if you just want to run something past uh, me or the rest of the guys that you would uh, like some feedback on, really good opportunity on a Monday. And that's every Monday uh, here on this uh, on this Facebook group, on this channel. Uh, there is a caveat, of course, and that's the, that's the same for the Wednesday morning. If I am traveling, uh, and we've tried this on a number of occasions with uh, pretty poor results in most cases, but if I'm traveling uh, and I'm staying out at a hotel or anything, if the Wi-Fi is pretty poor or pretty bad, then I will probably give the live cast a miss. Now, often I'll give you a warning of that. I'll tell you that I'm going to be traveling. I'm going to be on the move. If I get an opportunity and the Wi-Fi is good, I'll try it. I'll give it a shot. But if I'm away, if I'm if I'm on the move, if I'm traveling for a seminar or uh, from a professional speaking or any of that, uh, and we've got poor Wi-Fi connection in the hotel, then I don't do the live cast because we've tried it previously. We've had a, a number of failures with it, and it's better to just give it uh, give it a miss. However. Having said that, the norm is you find us here seven thirty on a Monday, uh, seven thirty in the evening on a Monday, and on a Wednesday you'll find us here at this time, five thirty every Wednesday morning. Uh, and this section is normally what we call a content-led section. This is a section where I will teach you a piece of content, something that you can do in your marketing. Um, for your business and help to move your business, help to move your business forward. Uh, we look at a various, various different things within this. Everything from flyer designs, leaflets, uh, magazine advertising. Currently looking at Google My Business, SEO, um, Facebook ads, uh, Facebook posts, Facebook groups, um, marketing in general, networking. There's a whole range of things that we look at here on a Wednesday morning, all designed to help you to use, utilize your marketing hour better so that you have an idea where you can be spending some time on your marketing hour. Um, so that's what, our, that's what our Wake Up Wednesday is all about. And again, I'll, I'll repeat that uh, we don't keep the post up here. That was a member vote many, many moons ago when we first started doing this. Uh, the Members voted that we would remove these um, about an hour or so after the presentation has been given uh, to encourage people to come and join us because otherwise we could all just be uh, I could be just sat here doing a recording and it could be a recording and then there's no point in having a live cast the idea of having a live cast is to get some interaction to get some questions from you guys uh, to get some movement in the morning so that you guys can actually see what this time of the morning is actually like and the fact that you can benefit from being up this time of the morning because of course you all are up this, this time of the morning aren't you you're not lying back in bed with this on your phone with your earphones in so you don't disturb the missus are you you're up like me, sat at a desk, working. That's right, isn't it? No. Uh, okay, so that's our wake-up uh, wake Wednesday. 
Our next induction, now we try to hold an induction at least every quarter, at least every three months, uh, two to three months, uh, depending on the numbers in terms of new people coming on board. Uh, our induction is, uh, the next one is on the 12th of October. That's a Saturday, the 12th of October. The registration page for that is now up. You can get that at jdewan.com forward slash induction. Um, we limit the number of people who would attend an induction to nine. Now, the whole idea of the induction is to help you to get the best out of your toolbox membership. The object is that you can come along, uh, have a look at what the toolbox is about, understand what the ethos behind the toolbox is, how the toolbox began, why I do what I do, how things are structured within the toolbox, uh, where you find information, uh, why f uh, content is drip fed out, all of that. Uh, we also then look at some of the bonuses, some of the gifts that you get within the toolbox. Um, when you arrive, you get given your gift pack as well, which is your toolbox with all of your goodies in it, and your mug and your t-shirt and, and all of that. Um, and also then we go through how you can make the best out of the toolbox for your business because everybody comes into the toolbox at a different level. Each business is at a different level. Some have just started, some have been in business for a while, um, and some are just struggling to get in to get custom and stuff. So the object is that we uh, help you to get the best out of your toolbox membership. So that day is not necessarily about talking to you about marketing. Yes, we cover some marketing elements, but it's about talking about the toolbox and how you can make the best use out of the training tools resources and me you know in terms of uh, contacting me for for Skype calls or chats or consults or whatever so um, we limit the number of people to nine so that you can get good value out of it rather than having a room full of 20 30 uh, people we have it limited to nine people so that we have time to spend with everybody there uh, to help them to get the best out of their their toolbox membership so that's our induction day um, I also need to remind you of uh, our skydive. Now, last month we did a, uh, a charity skydive for the Julian Campbell Foundation, a, uh, a charitable organization that helps uh, underprivileged or deprived children who have uh, issues, suffer with anxiety or bullying or mental health issues, that type of thing. Um, brilliant organization. Anything that helps children is, is a brilliant organization. Uh, and we did a, a, a skydive for those last month. We raised over £1,500 for the charity. I, I'm not sure of the exact final figure at the moment, but it was over, over £1,500 for the charity, um, which helps them to help these underprivileged kids, which is fantastic. And every penny goes to the charity. It's a non-profit organization. Uh, there's nobody pulling a salary or a wage out of it. It is um, every penny that goes in goes directly to the, the cause itself. Which is great. Uh, so that, that's what we did last month. Now, one of our members, Craig, was unable to jump on the day um, because that we had, due to bad weather, the situation changed. And the day that we had planned to jump, we all couldn't jump because of the bad weather. Uh, some of us were able to go back the next day and make the jump. That was George and myself. We were able to go back and make that jump. Uh, the following day but unfortunately Craig wasn't because of some commitments that Craig had he had some family event on that he, he just couldn't get away from so he was unable to do that so he's still to do his jump which means he's just giving his charitable giving page is still available for you guys to support him now he is uh, going to uh, register to do his jump this I think he said this week or next week he's going to let us know when that happens when he's got the actual date for the jump but look guys go and find his just giving page there is a link to it somewhere inside of the toolbox and in fact if somebody could find that now and post it that would be fantastic um but go and contribute to that because it is a good cause and it is good good encouragement for craig as well who is actually going to be making that jump um on his own because we, we were going to do it as a group uh, and unfortunately now he's going to be doing this on his own so give him as much encouragement as possible by supporting him to to do this uh, but also once he posts the date once he posts the date that he's able to do it um, have a look and see if you're free to go and join them even if it's just I don't mean to do the jump but to be on the ground and support because that is uh, a big help now once I know the date I'll be looking at it and seeing if I can jump up there and, and support him as well uh, so we'll be watching for that so when Craig posts that date let's have a look and see if we can go and attend but certainly guys go and contribute because the cause is a good cause um, and it's good encouragement for Craig as well
Okay, so let me see some thumbs and hearts if you've already uh, sponsored Craig or one of the guys uh, for that jump. Or if you're just about to go and find Craig's and give him a, uh, a, a bit of sponsorship as well. Just some thumbs and hearts, smiley faces. If you've either already contributed or you're about to contribute to that. Well, I have a quick look and see if anybody else has joined us this hour of the morning. Um, I think I said already good morning, Thomas Hatton. Uh, Trevor Cole has joined. Great to see you there. Nigel Rooney, good morning to you, Mr. Rooney. Nice to have you on board, sir. Matt Payne has also joined. Uh, nice to see you there, Matt. Uh, good morning to you guys. Right, what have I done with my uh, my presentation? Here we go. Okay, next thing I've got is uh, something I first spoke about on Monday at the Q and A uh, live question and answer on on Monday, and unfortunately for some reason the slides that I had prepared managed to disappear. Uh, and this is the uh, the whole idea of Toolbox TV. So let me recap on uh, where we are with Toolbox TV. For those of you who weren't there on Monday, you see, Toolbox TV started as a feature on a Sunday morning where I would create a video during the course of the week based on a marketing topic and post it on a, on a Sunday morning so that every Sunday morning you were getting some new, fresh content. This was before the time that we were able to do these live casts. It was before the time that we were able to create live uh, streaming on Facebook. Of course, technology moved on. We, we start doing the, uh, the live casts. I started presenting uh, here on, a, um, on an evening. Uh, then we got encouraged to do the morning live cast. So now we do a Wednesday morning live cast and we do a uh, Monday evening question and answer. So there's fresh content now during the live cast on a Wednesday morning. It's a new training coming in every week. Uh, question and answers, the questions generate content. That's new stuff coming in every week into the Facebook group, which made doing me doing the Toolbox TV a little bit irrelevant uh, for me to be coming in again a third time during the week and doing that. So what I've been trying to do over the last few months, more than that, almost, probably two years now, uh, is I've been trying to encourage members to make the Toolbox TV a member feature, an opportunity for members to share with other members stuff that they're doing in their business that is working for them, to encourage them to share uh, tools that they have been using. And I don't mean electrical tools. I'm talking about business tools that they have been using in their business, strategies that they've been using in their business to develop their business. Because it's an environment where you can learn from one another, okay? You can learn even if it's just from your story, from how how you came into the industry, how you um, started your own business, why you started your own business, how's that going for you, what's the journey you've had along the way. So there's a number of different things that you can deliver in a toolbox TV that will be of interest and help to other members. And that's what I've been trying to encourage members to do uh, over the last sort of, I think it's about 24 months, about two years or so, I've been trying to encourage you guys to record a Toolbox TV and send it in to me. You, you've heard me say it time and time again, a little snort, short snippet of video. You know, you grab your phone, you put it into the um, portrait, not the portrait, the landscape view like so, rather than like so. You record a quick segment, anything from three to eight minutes, three being the uh, minimum, eight being the maximum, and then you send it in to me. I'll do the editing, I'll top and tail it, do whatever needs to be done with it in order to uh, put it up live on a Sunday morning. So I've asked, I've cajoled, I've uh, harassed, bullied and harried people to do this over the last two years with various different levels of success. So what I've considered, what, I've, what I'm doing now is I'm turning this into what we're calling our Toolbox TV Challenge. And I want to run it for three months, okay? 12 weeks. I want to run it for 12 weeks. And if it's successful over the 12 weeks, we will rerun it again. Okay? Can I just see some thumbs and hearts and smiley faces if that is of interest to you? If you are uh, stoked by the idea of doing a toolbox TV challenge. The last challenge that we did was a YouTube challenge, and that helped people to set up their YouTube uh, channel and to create videos for YouTube. 
Um, not seeing so many happy smiley faces or anything going up across the screen here unless my system's not working. So what's going on guys? Where are these happy smiley faces that are telling me you guys are keen and interested and willing to do these? Ah, there we go. There we go. That's what I want to see. I want to see you guys keen, interested and willing to uh, go ahead and do these toolbox challenges. Bear with me a second while I just move my screen around so I can see your happy smiley faces as they go up across the screen that makes more sense now i can see it there we go uh so yeah so the idea then is that we will we will run a uh, a 12 week challenge three month challenge and at the end of this 12 months if this is successful and i hope it will be then we'll rerun it and we'll continue to run it um so let's let's have a look at what the challenge consists of uh, get your pen and paper, guys, because we're starting this challenge as of Sunday. Sunday, I will announce the start of the challenge. You need to be ready for that because there are rules, like any challenge. There will be rules to the challenge. I will keep it as simple as possible as far as the rules are concerned. Uh, I am looking for one more person to join the admin team. I need somebody to jump on and help with Dave. Um, sorry, with um with Steve, Dave, where did I get that? Uh, with Steve to help out on the uh, on the admin. Um, now it may be that I actually select. To be fair, I might select a non toolboxer, so one of our experts in the group, because we've got we've got a number of experts that are in the toolbox group that have been in to do webinars for you to help out uh, and deliver uh, content to you. And it may be an idea actually to be fairer to have one of those. Uh, jump in on the admin team and help out with this so that the, the voting and, and such like is fair. But I think of what I've decided is that the uh, the admin team will whittle it down over the 12-week uh, uh, period. The admin team will whittle down the best videos uh, down to about three, uh, possibly five, but certainly down to three, and then allow you guys, put, put a poll up and allow you guys to vote are on your favorite. So let, let's just look at how this is going to shape up. Let's look at the rules and how we want this to work. So please grab a pen, grab a piece of paper and write these down. It will be a 12 week challenge. Okay, so it will run starting from Sunday of next week. So it's not going to be like a January challenge, a month, you know, a February challenge. It will start from um, Next Sunday, sun, this this Sunday coming, actually, yeah, next Sunday, this Sunday coming, it will start. It will run for a period of 12 weeks. Um, what I expect from the challenged people, the contenders, the, the participants, whatever you uh, want to call them, is a video that is no shorter than three minutes and no longer than eight minutes. And that video, I've given you some ideas, but here you go, write them down again. That video must look at some of the following areas, okay? Won't be exclusively tied to this, you decide, but, you know, the, the key areas that we are looking for is what are strategies that you are using in your business that are working for you? So that's one topic or one area you can you can look at. You can take a strategy that you're using, whether you learned it in the toolbox or you learned it elsewhere or you read it in a book, but whatever it is that you have taken and used in your business and you have res you've had a result with. And you'll tell us in this video what the strategy is, where you learned that strategy and how you're implementing it in your business, how you are using it. Because most times when we take a strategy, we don't implement it exactly as we were taught it. We tweak it and change it and we implement it the way that it fits our business. But that's what we want to hear, how you adapted it to work in your business. And then we want to hear the results that you are getting from that. So that's one area you can look at. Another area you can look at is a strategy that you've looked at and tried that hasn't worked for you. So something that you've used and it hasn't been successful. So all the same thing. Where did you discover the strategy? How did you put the strategy to use for you in your business? And how or why did it not work for you? Because people will learn from how you did well, but they'll also learn from how you did poorly or how things didn't work for you. So those are two areas. A third area is for you to explain your story. Just tell us, you know, what 
Why did you start out in business? How did you get into the industry? Why did you become an electrician in the first place? Tell us about your journey. What happened that, you know, did you suddenly wake up one day and decide you want to be an electrician? Were you uh, working doing something else and you changed jobs? What What is it? What brought you into the industry? Tell us about that journey and how you got from there to where you are today. Okay, so talk a little bit about your own personal story of coming into the industry and how you got it, because I'm sure we all came into the industry uh, in different ways. We all did in different sort of ways. Guys, what I'm trying to do now is give you ideas so nobody's struggling and nobody's sitting back and going, oh, I don't know what to do a video on. I don't know what to do a toolbox TV on. When your name gets called, you will have to do a video. So here are some of the areas that you need to look at. Okay. Another thing that you can do is review a tool that you use in your business. I'm not talking about an electrical tool. I do not want people talking to me about megameters or drills or cable rollers or anything like that. Those are not the tools I'm talking about. I'm talking about business tools. And that can be as simple as a spreadsheet that you've created to manage something, to do something with. But something that you have created or some tool that you're using in your business, whether it be for marketing purposes or pure business purposes or recruitment purposes or staff management purposes, customer relation purposes, but a tool that you have either created a simple little, like I said, as simple as a spreadsheet, or it may be a piece of software or a program or something that you have bought that you are using in your business and that's working for you. You know, people have done reviews on things like um, Certify, iCertify. Uh, people have done reviews on things like ServiceMate. So things like that. If you're using them in your business, and do not concern yourself if somebody has previously done a review of it. We're not, you know, that doesn't worry us. What, what we're looking at is how you're using it in your business, what you're doing with it, what you've discovered is good about it, what you um, have tweaked in order to make it work for you and your business. So that's another area that you can look at. And of course, then there's always your toolbox journey. You know, when did you come into the toolbox? Why did you come into the toolbox? What's your favorite part of the toolbox? What What is it that you really enjoy about the toolbox? Is it the content that's drip fed out? Is it the live casts? Is it the regular meetups? Um, where is your business now in relation to where it was when you started with the toolbox? What have been the big shifts? What have been the big changes? You know, most people will tell me it's more about the mindset. You know, when I started doing the, uh, the toolbox, for me, it was about giving practical information to people to help them to grow and move their business. But what I've discovered is that most people get a lot of value out of the whole mindset stuff that we talk about as well, um, which is interesting. So so those are a couple of ideas of things that you can record in your video. Guys, I want to see some thumbs, hearts, smiley faces if this is resonating with you now. If you're starting to think to yourself, yeah, now I've got some really cool ideas. I've got some ideas how I could. If my name gets called, I now know how I could create a video. I now know a topic, at least, that I could create. And all I have to do, I don't have to worry about fancy studios. I don't have to worry about anything else. I can just have my wife, my girlfriend, my, my son, my daughter, hold up my phone in the uh, landscape view like so. Guys, do not do it like that with the two bars. Okay, do not do it like that. Hold it in landscape view uh, like so and record your video. No less than three minutes. No more than eight minutes. Uh, in order to qualify for this competition, okay? Uh, challenge, competition, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so what will then happen is once you have recorded it, you need to get it to me. You do not post it online. Do not post it. It needs to come to me to be put out on a Sunday morning, okay? And the way it will work is that you will send it to me via a, a, a website called WeTransfer. Very simple website, www. We transfer, uh, and on we transfer, there's very simple instructions that you follow in order to upload your video. Uh, you put my email address in, and it sends me the video. Simple as that. Now, I was going to make it, you know, that you can use Dropbox, that you can use um, uh, WhatsApp, and all of that. But let's keep it simple. Let's keep it all in one place. We transfer. As long as you got access to the web, you've got access to we transfer, and it will work for you. If you are challenged with using that, simply contact me. Let me know, and I will describe to you how to do it. You know, you've recorded your video. You're thinking, I can't use this WeTransfer thing. You will be able to, by the way. You just go to www.wetransfer.com, follow the instructions, and you upload the video. But if for some reason you get stuck, let me know, and I will uh, post some instructions for you to actually do that so that you can uh, upload your video and get it to me. So it's a 12-week challenge. 
short video, three to eight minutes. Um, you send it to me. Does not get posted in the group. Does not get posted online. It comes straight to me in order to qualify for this challenge. Got it? Then, uh, at the at the end of you recording your video, you will name two other toolbox members. Okay, you will name two other toolbox members that you believe should record the next video. Okay, two. Okay, I'll worry about how we deal with the, the people who've been called out. I'll deal with how we post the videos and, and all of that. But you will list two people. By the way, I appreciate that we are um, a, a tight group. Um, and there's a possibility that people may mention the same people. We have to deal with that. We have to work with that. Okay, I understand that. Don't fret yourself too much about it. All you have to do is think to yourself, right, I can name two people uh, that I want to uh, record a Toolbox TV. I want to see them record a Toolbox TV. And, guys, don't go for all the obvious ones. Don't go for the guys who are happy to do it. You know, we all know, we've seen, there are a number of people who are more than happy to record a Toolbox TV. And I'm sure that over the course of this challenge, we will see videos from them, which is great. Um, but don't go for the obvious names. And you know who I'm talking about when I talk about the obvious names. You will have seen them sending in Toolbox TVs from time to time. So don't go for the obvious names, but have a look. And, you know, go deep down into the membership and start looking at people that you think you could call out to do this challenge. Okay? Good. Failure to complete for any member. Failure to complete on the challenge will result in a penalty being issued. Now, I posted um, during the week a link, or I posted a, a post asking people what they believed fair challenges were for a, um, a penalty. What would be a good challenge for a penalty? And, and some of you kindly posted on that. Uh, I will look for some more information on that as well. But what we will do by Sunday, what we will do is we will take perhaps three of those, uh, maybe four of those challenges. We will take three or four of those uh, penalties, should I say, not challenges, three or four of those penalties, and we will post those to you in the group as being the penalties for this challenge. So when you record your segment, and you're happy with your Toolbox TV, at the end of your Toolbox TV, after a short pause, you've done your, your, your Toolbox TV piece, you will then name the person and tell them what the challenge is. Okay? So in other words, let's say, for example, I'm doing mine, and I'm going to name, uh, let's say Dan McAdam, just for the hell of it, yeah? So I'm going to go, um, okay, and that's the end of Toolbox TV. Until the next time, continue to learn and grow, and I'll see you in the next video. Okay, Dan McAdam and Connor Lazaro, you guys are up next. If you fail to complete this video, if you fail to complete this challenge, I expect to see a video of you sniffing your own smelly sock. Okay, so that will be it. You will have, now you cannot just invent challenges yourself. We will post this week by Sunday if not on Sunday, I will post a list of challenges or a list of penalties that you are allowed to call people out on, okay? So if they do not then post their Toolbox TV, which should be nice and simple, they will have to post a recording of themselves doing the challenge. So in other words, if you're not brave enough to step up to the camera and talk and say uh, and teach and show uh, your members um, the extent of your knowledge and help them to grow in their business, then you will be recorded just doing a penalty, whatever that penalty will be, and that will be posted uh, in place of your uh, in place of your toolbox TV. And that's the reason I'm saying you call out two people rather than one person, because I am certain that there will be people who will not complete the challenge. They'd rather do the penalty. So we will have a collection of challenges. Uh, as in Toolbox TVs, and we'll have a collection of penalties, and they will get posted. So, guys, look, the key thing about this is, the key thing about this is, and we've done challenges before where things get a little bit competitive and so on and so forth. I like a bit of compet competitiveness. However, I want this to be a bit of fun, okay? I want it to be educational, 
but I also want it to be entertainment. So I want you guys to enjoy the process. I want you to have some fun with the challenges. I want you to have some fun with the penalties, but I want you to learn from it and I want you to enjoy the whole process. Okay? Can I have a thumbs up and a heart and smiley faces if you're going to buy into this and you're going to come with me on this journey and you're going to enjoy this? Because, guys, you'll enjoy it, you'll have fun, and you will learn at the same time. And the best way of learning is learning from your peers, learning from the people that you are actually involved with that are at the same level as you in, in business and playing the game. Okay? So here's my commitment to the challenge, right? I am going to put up a £50 voucher, a £50 Amazon voucher, for the person who wins this challenge at the end of the uh, the 12 weeks. So at the end of the 12 weeks, uh, what will happen is our admin panel, that will be myself and two others, which will be Steve Oakey and one other admin person. And I, I, just as I'm thinking about it now, and this is coming to me now, I may ask somebody outside of the toolbox, as in one of our experts rather than uh, one of the members. Um, so it's fair then, then the members can get involved in, and be involved in the challenge. Um, so here's my commitment. I will uh, create. Uh, sorry, I will. I will uh, give a fifty pound Amazon voucher to the person who we vote the winner. The person who receives uh, the most votes from you guys, because we will whittle it down to three people. I, I think three, maximum maybe five, but let's say three people. We as the admin group will bring it down to three people. We will put a poll up for you guys then to vote, uh, which will make it very simple. And obviously, the person with the most number of votes is the person who will win it. And it'll be based on the video that they had created over that period, over that 12 week period. Okay. Um, so I think that pretty much covers it as far as the challenge is concerned. Now I am sure somewhere along the line, there will be a glitch in uh, how it's been run, or there'll be a rule that we haven't thought about, or something like that. Okay, let's grow with this. Let's enjoy this and have some fun. I don't want people picking holes in it and going, oh, it's not fair because of this, and it's not fair because of that. Let's grow with this thing. Let's make this work for us and have some fun along the journey. Okay, you with me? Thumbs, heart, smiley faces if you are with me on this. And comment in the box below now if you are up for this challenge. Let's see some comments. Let's see some oh yays. All right, we'll make it a little bit American. Oh yays in the box below if you are up for this challenge. I want to see some real excitement about this. I want to get this off the ground. Yes, we're going to have some fun doing the challenge. We're going to have some fun doing the uh, forfeits, the penalties. And somebody's going to walk away happy at the end of it with a £50 Amazon voucher. If we make a success of this, and I hope we, we do, and I think we can, then we roll this out every three months. And I'll be happy to do that every three months. And you know what? We may look at the prize at the end of uh, every every 12 weeks as well. We look at the prize. We may increase that, the, the, either the value, or we may change it to a completely different uh, a different prize for the winner. We'll look at that as we move along, as we grow with this. Okay? So I'm glad to see that there's some hearts, smiley faces, and things going up. It shows me that there's a level of interest in this, which is great. Um, but I'm, I'm really, you know, I'm, I'm racking my brain here, guys, to try and get you guys involved with this Toolbox TV thing because I know that your experience will help other members. I just know that. I've known that for a long time, that what you do in your business will help your fellow members in the toolbox. And it's not about, we're not competing with one another here. This is collaboration. This is helping one another to grow our businesses. Okay? Wonderful. Uh, let me have a quick scan down and see who else has joined us or where we're at so far before we move into looking at uh, the second part of Google, Google My Business. So what have we got? Uh, Comments doing paperwork today. Cool. Uh, oh, we've gone past all that previously, haven't we? Yes. Uh, Steve Palmer's joined us. Good morning, Steve. Nice to see you back on our uh, Wake Up Wednesdays. Neil Jenkins is here. Great to see you, sir. Neil, we need to have a word. You and I, we need to talk about this mastermind group down in uh, in your area. Leela Singh is there this hour of the morning. Good morning to you, Leela. Uh, Gary Pratt has joined us. Nice to see you there. Gary, Gary, please, we've got to get in touch with one another as well. I'm so far behind and stuff, but we've got to get together and have breakfast shortly as well. Um, okay, Martin Scott says, yay, he's got his idea, so he's going for the Toolbox Challenge. I love it. Uh, Steve Palmer's up for the challenge. Great. Thomas Hatton's up for the challenge. Great. Nigel Rooney's up for the challenge. Fantastic. Darren Ecton. Uh, Thomas has his ideas sorted. Perfect. Uh, get recording, guys. 
You know, don't wait for your name to be called. Get recording and hang on to your recording until you are challenged. Just make this easy for yourself so you're not under time pressure. Because you will have, from the Sunday, you will have five days. Because you will have to have that to me before the following Sunday. I mean, that, that's seven days. But I don't want people dropping it in on me on the blinking Sunday. You with me? So you will have a five-day window in order to get that video uh, across to us. So, you know, if you have it recorded in advance, even better. And then all you have to do is when your name is called, post your video. Job done. Wonderful. Um, excellent. I like it. Uh, James Rabbi, oh, yeah, he's up for it as well. Perfect. I'm loving that. Okay, guys, are we ready now to have a look at the second part of Google My Business? Let me see some thumbs, hearts, and smiley faces. We like seeing those thumbs, hearts, and smiley faces. Um, I've got to do something about this lighting as well. Uh, I don't know what... I've tried a number of different things with this lighting, and I keep getting... I think it's my bald head that it's shining off of, so let's have a look and see what we can do here. Uh, I don't know that that's making... Eh, that's not making any difference. No. No. Okay, that's as good as it's going to get, I think. Um, I, I, I will continue to experiment and get it right. Okay, so Google My Business. Uh, where were we with it? Last week, we had a, a look at it. Right, okay. So let's just recap on last week. Last week, I encouraged you to claim your Google uh, My Business listing. Now, just as a recap, I'm not going through all of this. I'm not teaching you how to do it, how to claim it. But it is common knowledge that many of you will have a Google My Business listing, but you will not have claimed your listing. Um, you will have a listing simply because Google and its bots and its spiders or whatever has gone through the web, it's found a number of different businesses, and it fills in, it's filling in the blanks, uh, and it's creating a listing for you. But you haven't claimed it. Google on it, not you. Um, so it's up there, and you look at it, and you go, yeah, that's me, I, I exist. But you don't own it. You don't control it, okay? You need to claim that listing. You need to uh, contact Google. You need to go into uh, google.com forward slash business claim your listing and then you can go through and fill out all the details and and uh make sure that you uh complete every section in that and the job uh, you know the, the, the description of your business make sure you're using that to fill it with keywords we'll talk about that when we come to seo management in a moment um but then you go through the process google sends you out a postcard with a a, a a serial number on it or code you pop pop that code in, and then you now have claimed your listing, okay? But go through that process, get your listing, make sure you have it claimed so that you can optimize that listing for you in your business. If you've no idea what I'm talking about, it is this part of Google. You know when you do a search on Google and underneath the map, so you have the ads above the map, people who've paid lots of money to be above it, which is daft because many people skip past that, okay? Um, so they pay to go up, up above, great, good for them. Then you have the map. And then underneath the map, you have a list of three businesses. Used to be, back in the day, used to be seven. But they've now reduced it down to three. They call it the Google Three Pack. Um, it used to be a pet name, Google Three Pack. That's not its official name. Its official name is Google My Business, GMB, Google My Business. It used to be called Google Maps or Google Places or My Google. Uh, it's had a number of different names over the years, currently called uh, Google My Business uh, or you know, co uh, commonly known as the three pack uh, because it offers up the top three businesses. So that's what I'm talking about. It's getting yourself listed in that area. Relatively important as far as uh, running a local business is concerned because it's the first place people will, will get your business if they Google, if they search for your business. Um, and it's very important in the sense that when, when you join the toolbox, one of the first things you get is a, a series of emails from me explaining to you how to set up your Google My Business, Google Places, Google Maps, whatever you want to call it, okay? Um, now, since that, that series of emails was created, things have moved on. It has grown. There is more information you can put in. You can make it more effective. Uh, and that's the whole purpose of this last two weeks of live casting and next week as well is filling you in on the information about Google My Business so that you can optimize it for best effect for your business. The beautiful thing about it, guys, is, uh, and here's the thing you've got to grasp, this isn't about spending money. You know, look at the top ones, the ones up above the, the map. Those guys spend a lot of money to get there, okay? 
they work hard to get there in terms of cash. They spend a lot of cash to get to the top of that listing. And they're competing with who's spending more cash. So, you know, if somebody else is spending more per click, then you've got to spend a little bit more and you're bidding for it, okay? Um, the listings below all of this are primarily based on SEO. You've got to be extremely good with SEO to get in the top, as you know, the first page of Google and so on and so forth. You've got to be really good with your SEO um, as far as that's concerned. But the Google, my business, the Google Places is more about how well you complete your listing how well you adhere to certain rules as far as the listing is concerned, which makes it really possible for you to outdo your local competition. Because if your local competition isn't paying attention to this, if they're not uh, completing their listing properly, if they're not optimizing their listing, if they're not tagging their images, if they're not doing all of the right things that we're talking about here, then you have a huge potential to jump way above them in the Google My Business listings in the places. Okay, so last week we had a look at things like um, <coughs> proximity and, and made it very clear so that you understand that Google, uh, Google My Business used to be Google Places, Google Maps, Google My Business serves up based on proximity. So what it wants to do is it wants to please the person who is searching by giving them local results first. And they make those results much more local to the searcher. So if I am searching for an electrician in Chatham, then if, uh, if I'm in Chatham, <laughs> it's going to give me the electricians that are closest to the point where I am searching from. Again, it's all about the intelligence that, that Google has or that the web has uh, about reading your IP address and knowing what server your IP address is bouncing off of and all of that kind of thing. They geographically tag you and go, right, so this guy is sat in, in Chatham or he's sat in Gillingham or he's sat in Rochester or at Bristol or whatever. So that's where I am now carrying out my search. And I type in, uh, I'm looking for an electrician or a local electrician or a trustworthy electrician or whatever. So Google goes, right, he's sat in Chatham, he's looking for an electrician. So I'm going to serve him electricians that are in Chatham. What I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to do better than that. I'm going to serve him the closest uh, electricians to him, the closest businesses to him, okay? Because that's what Google wants. It wants to satisfy me. It wants to make me happy. So it's going to give me the closest ones to me. So if there's an electrician who is a mile away from me, it's going to give me him before he will give me the one that's 15 miles away. Am I making sense here, guys? Thumbs, heart, smiley faces. Okay? So the, the one thing to realize is geographically, you need to work your area and know your area that you are operating in and where your business is. So, for example, if all of your listing on Google My Business is based on your home address, but the fact is you're working 15, 20 miles away from your home. So, for example, uh, when my old business, I mean my old, old business, the one that failed, uh, I lived in South Norwood, London, but my work was primarily around Wandsworth in London. OK, and that's where I targeted a lot of my business back in the day with the old business. OK, so by me having my business registered at my home address, then that wouldn't serve me well to get business in uh, in um, Wandsworth because anybody searching in Wandsworth will be served up electricians working or living in or around Wandsworth. It's not going to send me uh, people who are, um, uh, you know, it, it's not going to send me the electrician, people in Wandsworth, because I'm not going to appear on the search. So with your address, you need to make sure that the address is registered at the place that you want to do the work, that you want to attract the customers. OK, a number of different ways you can do that. OK, there are uh, addresses that you can use, like, for example, uh, if you have an office uh, that you are using rather than your home address, use the office address. Make sure that that's your registered business address. Uh, your accountant's address, if that's in the area where you're operating, make sure that that's your registered business address. Uh, you can purchase addresses uh, as in virtual addresses. Make sure that you use that. But make sure it's a full address with a postcode, not a P.O. box. Google does not want to and will not recognize addresses with P.O. boxes. It's not going to serve them up, okay? But make sure that the area you are serving is the area you are listed for in your in your settings in your in the setup of your NAP name address and phone number, which we're going to talk about this morning. Okay, so proximity is important. Then last week we looked at things like uh, 
category. Uh, so we looked at yeah, we looked at proximity, uh, we looked at category and optimization. So making sure that you were registered under things like electrician, electrical contractor, and so on and so forth, because those things are important. Then we looked at optimizing your listing, going back over your listing and making sure all of the details are completed. Uh, they've also now they allow you to give much more detail in the description of your business. So what you should do is have a lot of keywords in that description, and keywords for what we do will be things like the word electrician, electrical contractor, uh, the area that you are operating in, and the type of work that you are doing. So for example, if I'm operating in Chatham, but there's a number of little villages around Chatham, I would have those you know listed somewhere in the description that I, I'm serving. Uh, Chatham and the uh, the wider Midway area, including uh, Laysan, da 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 da, da and so on and so forth, and I list those. So it's it's, not, it's keyword stuffing, I guess, to a degree. But you've got to you've got to get some keywords into the description as well. That's all part of your SEO optimization, also. Um, so those are the things we looked at, and then also last week we had a, a really good tip, which was using a piece of software called. Um, uh, what was it called? No, it's it's a website called Imager. Uh, where did it go? Where did my uh... yeah? There we go. It's uh, geoimager.com, and that's a, a website where you can upload your photographs, and it geo tags them. It tags the photograph with the address that you pop into it. So, for example, if I want to do my business address at the Innovation Center, I would put Innovation Center ME five nine DF. Um, and then the, the, the geotag would find the longitude and latitude, and it will imprint that, stamp it onto digitally onto the photograph that I have uploaded. Which means then when I upload that photograph into my Google, uh, Google My Business listings, which you need to do, you should have photographs in there, you should have reviews in there, photographs, so on and so forth, then it is also uh, giving a key indicator to uh, Google My Business uh, about how relevant I am for that area. Now, James Rabbi has uh, suggested that you you keep it, and, and I agree with him having looked at it this week, um, that you don't put lots of other addresses. You literally keep your office address. So if you've got 10 photographs up there, you have the address that your registered office is at on those photographs, okay? And that will help to cement the fact that you are operating in that area, and it will help when people are searching for them to find you in that area on the Google listings as well. It gives it a lot more relevance for your Google My Business listing, okay? But geotagging the images is really good. I would suggest you use that also for your website. So you use that, that uh, geo-imager um, tool to uh, geotag any photographs that you're uploading onto your own website as well. In fact, I would do it for any photographs you're uploading on Facebook or anything because it will help in terms of the search searches when people are looking for an electrician in your area. The more you have up there, the better it's going to be. But keep it all in the area that you're actually operating for the office, your office address. Uh, hopefully that helps. Uh, so that, that's what we were looking at last week. Right, this week, what we need to do is move on and start looking at uh, some other areas. We've got two other areas that we're going to look at this week. We're going to do some more on this next week, and it may run for another week as well, because I want you guys to really put this stuff into action. In fact, in fact, how many of you acted on last week's information? How many of you went ahead and did anything with your Google My Business listing as a result of last week's livecast? Let me see some comments in the box. I'm going to come to those comments in just a moment and see who has actually done some work on their uh, Google My Business listing starting from our presentation last week. Because I want you to follow along with this, guys. That's why I'm giving it to you in chunks, in, 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 in usable bite-sized pieces so that you can go away and work on this. Uh, and it will help. It will get you recognized locally. And people book business. They book people based on these listings. So get yourself – I'm not saying everybody does, but people do use these. So get yourself uh, up high on these rankings. The object is to get you up in that top three of that, that three pack, uh, but at least to get you ranking inside of that pack. Okay, got it. Cool. Uh, so we're going to look at SEO listings, that are SEO signals that uh, Google My Business is looking for. Uh, one of the things that I've already mentioned is make sure that your, you know, your description in the Google My Business um, uh, settings or listings is completed properly. 
that it's fully completed, that you've used a lot of detail in there. Use up every word that you can use in that description. Don't just put a one-liner, we are electricians in Chatham. Put a really good description in there so that you are maximizing the SEO potential. And go through all of the tabs and complete every section of the tab. Upload photographs, uh, upload reviews. Reviews are very important. We've got a whole um, live cast on reviews next week, okay? A whole live cast on, on reviews next week. Uh, but optimize every single tab. Don't overlook a question because every single question will help you to rank higher than your competition who are not answering those questions as far as completing your review is concerned. Okay, uh, let me have a quick look and see what comments are that we have in here at this moment. Uh, where were we? Um, Neil Jenkins, he's up for the challenge, but didn't catch the first part about this. Uh, are you going to put it on a post? Yes, I will be putting it on a post uh, either on or before Sunday, Neil. Uh, in fact, I will do a quick video on the challenge so that people understand where the challenge has come from, what it's all about. Uh, however, you also have the opportunity to go back over and re-watch this video once I complete today. It's going to remain up for about an hour or so after the after we've done the live cast. Um, so you can pick up any information there. But yes, I will do a post and I'll do a video about the challenge uh, for next week as well. So Chris Longley's joined. Great to see you there. Morning to you, sir. Steve Oakey is here. Good morning to you, sir. Uh, Martin Scar changed my hours to open 24 hours. Good. That was one of the tips from from last week. Um, uh, Steve Palmer did some work on it. Great. Mark Horsfall claimed his listing last week. Great. I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased to see that you're working on these guys. It's great to see that you're actually implementing stuff. Uh, so Martin also geotagged some pictures. Perfect. Question. Already had a lot of interaction with a lot of my picks. Will it damage my listing by taking them down and re-uploading? Uh, the honest answer to that, mate, is I really don't. I don't think it will damage the listing um, by taking it down and uploading it. Um, I'm not. I'm not certain it would. It would damage it. Um, I, 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 the honest answer is I don't think so, but I really don't know. In fact, Gary's on the call. Gary Prattness here. He may be able to give that a better answer than uh, than I can. I, I certainly know with your website it doesn't because on your website Google likes to see fresh and new content, and making slight changes like that is new content. It's classed as you know if you take down the, the image and make a change to it, make an alteration to it, and then re-upload it, uh, Google sees that as fresh content. So on on your website, I know it wouldn't affect it, but I. It, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Gary Pratt may be a better one to ask on that. I love the way you guys ask questions that stretch me a little bit because now I will go away and I'll look at that and I'll, I'll try and work out what the actual uh, reality is behind that. Um, but, yeah, thanks for that, Martin. Um, hopefully between now and then Gary can answer it and I'll have a look over the course of the week and see um, – See what else. Uh, Trevor Cole, yes, he put some pictures on and tagged them, uh, put some services on, and uh, put a uh, booking form on. Excellent stuff. Right, I'm really pleased to see that you guys are implementing stuff. Uh, Nigel Rooney's really still on holidays. Um, so, Wake Up Wednesday, wasn't his radar. Hey, no worries, mate. Uh, the guys will fill you in on, on what you missed, or uh, yeah, we can have a chat when you're back from your holes, mate. Uh, so, yeah, where are we at? Implementation. Good to see that you are implementing, guys. Really happy with that. So keep doing that. And, and the stuff we're going to talk about this week, do, do some work on that as well. Right. So we're now looking at SEO signals. What is Google My Business looking for? Uh, so primarily here at the moment, we, we're talking about your website, okay? Things you need to do on your website that make it uh, appeal to the Google My Business listing, okay? Because you will have a link to your website on Google My Business, on the on the Google My Business listing. Um, and things that will help will be things like using H1 tags. Now, if you're not a web developer, if you're not building your own website using Wix or any of those type of things, your web developer will know what the, the H tags or H1 tags are. There's a number of different H tags, but the H1 tags, um, get higher relevance as far as your uh, your listings are concerned. So what am I talking about? There are these headline banners that you can see uh, across the top here where it says Wandle Electrical Services, your local electrician. That's a header, a H1 tag, uh, and that will be spotted by Google. So what they say is in your H1 tags, 
make sure that you have some of your keywords that you want to be discovered for that are relevant to the description in your uh, Google My Business listing. So in other words, um, in, in this case, um, Anthony would have, should have, uh, Wandle Electrical Services in his description and Local Electrician in his description. Making sense? So if you've if you uh, if you've got it in your description in your uh, Google My Business, then your H1 tags, and you will have a number of H1 tags on your website, but your H1 tags should refer to um, keywords that you have in your Google My Business listing. Okay, a lot to take on, but hopefully you understand that. Some thumbs, hearts, and smiley faces, if that makes sense. Again, it's a little bit of keyword stuffing. I don't like to use the word keyword stuffing because that sounds has like bad connotations to it. But the bottom line is you want to make the words that you're using in your description on Google My Business match with the words that you're using in your Google, um, in, sorry, in your website H, H1 tags. And remember that Google's not reading words like an, it, the, and so on and so forth. So just think about the words you're using, uh, the location and the service that you are providing okay so that's h1 tags make good use of your h1 tags uh, if you're not aware of what they are talk to your developer give him a list of keywords that you have in your uh, google description in your google my business description give him some keywords for words that you are looking to be found on your local area the, the type of work you do uh, the service that you provide okay uh, give him those words and get him to build them into your uh, your H1 tags. Gary will know exactly what you're talking about. If your website is built by Gary, he'll know exactly what we're talking about here. Next thing you need to do, guys, is make sure that your name and address appears on every page of your website. Now, the best way to do that is to have it in the footer of your website. So down here, you'll see on, again, I'm using Anthony's website as an example here. Uh, down here, you'll see he has his, uh, his business address listed and it appears at the bottom of the page in the footer of the page um, so this gives us a good opportunity then to talk about what we call the nap okay so remember what i've just said make sure that your address your business address is listed on every page of your website preferably the easiest thing to do is put it in the footer but make sure it is on every page of your website that's number one okay now we need to look at nap uh, and with NAP, what we simply refer to as NAP is your name, address, and phone number. <clears throat> and the relevance and importance of NAP is that wherever your address appears on the web, you should aim to keep it as consistent as possible. The address should be the same right across the board. Now, let me give you an example of how it... Um, Sorry for doing this, Mr. Palmer. You are on the call this morning. But this is how it should not appear. Uh, and, Steve, hopefully you'll benefit from this because you'll be able to go back and do something about this. Um, I pulled down Steve Palmer's uh, listings. I just did a search for JPS Electrical. Uh, and I discovered that on one of the listings that I found on Yelp, he's listed as 5 Ludgate Road, Bristol, BS13, 7AJ. And he's got his phone number there. Great. But then when you find him on 192.com, he's listing changes to 5 Ludgate Road, Bristol, Avon, with the postcode, and then the phone number. Okay? So there is a difference. You've got to be consistent with the address. The uh, I know it seems like a small thing that he's just added the Avon there, uh, and it's not on the other site. But Google is looking at differences. And if it can find if it finds differences, it doesn't give it as much relevance. If it finds the exact same address, it gives it a much higher relevance. So everywhere you list your business, the name of your business should appear exactly the same. The name. So if it's JPS Electrical Services, then it should be JPS Electrical Services across the board. Uh, you know, with capitals, if it's JPS capitals, without lowercase, you, you, you know, don't change the case. Um, with the address, you keep the address exactly the same all the way across the board. So every part of the address should read exactly the same. So again, Ludgate Road would be Ludgate R-O-A-D rather than R-D. 
or if you were going to do RD, it would be RD across the board, everywhere you listed it. So these are two examples. There was a third one for uh, for Steve because we did another search and found him on a um, another listing, uh, free index or something like that. Uh, and the address had changed yet again. It went from Ludgate Road, Bedminster Down, Bristol. Different address again. Steve, hopefully you're you're uh, you're understanding what I'm doing here, and everybody else should be seeing the same as well. So everywhere you are listed, your address should be exactly the same. Now, the um, the the best way I find to do this is to create a little spreadsheet that has your address in it so that when you go out to do these listings, when you go out to do these free listings on, on various different sites, you can then just copy and paste so that the, the address you're getting is exactly the same. There's no chance of sort of like typo errors um, and there's no chance of, of you getting it wrong. Now, you know, in Steve's defense here, in Steve's defense, there are possibilities that these have been pre-populated by the owner of these websites, which makes it more important that you spend time. And remember what we're talking about through all of these Wake Up Wednesdays, guys. We're talking about things you do during your marketing hour. Okay? So one of the things that you could be doing during your marketing hour is going back through all of these free listings. I'll show you a tool in a little while that will help you to do that. Um, going back through all of these free listings, claiming your listing and making the alterations yourself so that you have the address right. Because most of these free indexing sites, most of them will pre-populate with the information that it finds online. And that may not be the way you want to be found. It may not be the way you want to be listed. But it could be having a detrimental effect. Well, certainly won't be helping you as far as getting high on the three-pack listing, if you've got a multitude of sites out there that have different addresses than the address you actually have on your on your listing. So spending some time during your marketing hour going back over these. And, you know, it's, it's not like you sit down and you go through, oh, shit, I've got 100 of these sites to go through. Your marketing hour, you split it down into various different sections. And you say, right, each day I go on, I'm going to do three of these sites. Because doing three a day or three a week is going to be better than doing none or better than feeling completely challenged by the fact that there's hundreds of these things out there and you're not going to start at all because it becomes too daunting and there's too many of them, okay? So just start, join your marketing hour and spend a little bit of time working on doing these and getting these right as far as your listings are concerned. We'll, we'll look at a tool in a minute that will show you how to actually do that when we come to talking about citations. At the moment, I'm just driving home the fact that the name, address, and phone number has to be consistent. You know, if you've got a space in the phone number after the first three digits, then have that consistent. If, that, if you don't have a space and it's closed, have that consistent. Google will pick up on these things, okay? Um, right, next thing as far as SEO is concerned. So we talked about address. We will talk about citations, which is where this is all really relevant. We'll talk about citations in a moment. Um, but talking again about SEO, things that, that uh, Google and Google My Business is looking for on your website are going to be things like videos. Having a video on your website, because Google own YouTube. So having a YouTube video, having a YouTube channel will help with your listing as well. Okay. Remember, guys, if you're doing all of this and your competition isn't doing this, you're winning. You're getting up in that three-pack. Remember what I said at the beginning. This is about the effort you put in. This isn't about the money you spend on uh, advertising. This is about the effort that you put into actually building your listing. And if your competition don't have a video on their websites and they don't have a YouTube channel, then you're already, again, miles ahead. Got it? So get a, a YouTube video up on your um, on your uh, web page and make sure, again, that the video is named with keywords from your description of your Google My Business listing. Making sense? So here we are. And, and Anthony, again, has Wondle Electrical Services. Okay? So you could do the same, have the name of the area or the business listed if it's in the description on Google My Business, have it in the name of the video that you have on your website, which is, of course, coming from your YouTube channel, a link to your YouTube channel, uh, which is going to help you again. SEO listing, okay? Next thing, guys, hopefully you're getting some value out of this, this this morning. Can I just see some thumbs, hearts, and smiley faces if you're getting some value out of this and you're learning something that you're going to put into place 
this week on your Google My Business. Because the next thing you need to look at as far as SEO is concerned is having a Google Map on your website. Not just a picture, not just an image. And I know some people just take a snapshot of a, uh, a road or whatever where their business is and put that on. Or they put a map of the area and say, we covered this area. What you need to do is take an embedded map. And again, if you're not doing this yourself, if you're not, if you don't understand how to do this and you have a web developer who's doing it for you, and certainly if your site is built by Gary, he will know exactly what you're doing here. But you need to embed a map which has your business at the center of it. Okay? You need a Google map embedded onto your website, one that has your pin in the uh, in the listing okay so you get a google map and you embed that onto your website that is going to help you with your listing as well but then you also should list the main area that you cover so for example me it would be chatham then it would be the wider medway area and then it would be a list of the the villages or areas around so you need to list those on your web page as well now anthony has conveniently on Anthony's site, he has the embedded Google map, and then beside it, he has a list of the areas that he covers. So those are other things you need to do that will help you. They'll help you with your wider SEO anyway. But we're looking at things that will help you with your Google My Business listing. Hopefully this is making sense, guys. Yes, everything that I've just talked about, <coughs> and Gary, I think, would back this up. Everything I've just talked about will help you with your wider SEO but the object of what we're talking about this past two weeks is your listing on Google My Business and getting you ranking on Google My Business. And remember, guys, this is about the effort you put in. If you're putting more effort in than your neighbor, than your comp nearest competition, then you're going to be winning this uh, race to get up onto the three-pack. Uh, and that's ultimately what you're aiming to do. That's what you're striving to get to. Um, so that is the uh, embedded Google Map and a list of the areas that you cover. And then of course, and I know Gary will support this one, of course, you need to have a blog linked to your website as well. So I know Gary builds on Drupal, uh, other people have their sites on WordPress. Both of these platforms allow you to have a blog linked or uh, a blog page associated with your website. Um, rather than having a blog completely separate to your web, having it linked to your website, and using, again, keywords, from your description box on your Google My Business listing, having those keywords show up in your uh, blog posts on a regular basis as well will also help with this. So those are a couple of uh, really big areas that uh, will help you as far as SEO is concerned to help your um, Google My Business listing. Hopefully that's making sense, guys. Can I see some thumbs, hearts, and smiley faces? Uh, before we move on to looking at citations, I am going to have a quick scan across uh, and see if anybody else has joined. Um, I see Russell Stark has joined, but I thought Russell had joined earlier. Okay, Russell Stark has joined. Good morning to you, Russell. Um, <coughs> Steve's excited about something. I, I'm aware that there are some listings out there that have these differences. Uh, this will be noted from a marketing area. Yeah, and that, that, I mean, that's the purpose of it, Steve. I'm not, it's not like I'm trying to pick on people. What I'm trying to say is that these listings exist. And in many cases, these free listings are pre-populated by organizations who put these posts up. Because what they're trying to do is attract your business in. What they want to do is get you to, to take a paid listing. So they give you a free listing. And then they pre-populate the, the free listing to try and encourage you to visit the site, all of that kind of stuff, okay? Uh, but the problem is when they pre-populate it and you don't claim the listing, when they pre-populate it, it may be with the wrong information. And that will hurt your SEO, whereas having the right information will really elevate and really help your uh, Google My Business. Anthony Jones has joined us as well. Good morning. Uh, so, yeah, going back to Steve. So taking some time during your marketing hour and just spending some time um, just spending some time going through, you know, two or three sites a day or a week 
is better than leaving them and doing nothing with it. And building into your marketing hour, you know, when, when people said to me, what am I supposed to be doing during my marketing hour? That's what you wake up Wednesdays about, guys, learning what to do during your marketing hour. So what you should be doing is, is segmenting time out and saying, you know what, on Tuesday, when I'm doing my marketing hour on a Tuesday, for the first 15 minutes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick out three uh, organic listings and I'm going to go through and make sure that I have optimized that listing for me and my business with the keywords that I want to use, with the address, phone number, and business name that I want to use. And I'm going to do three of them every Tuesday during 15 minutes, first 15 minutes of my marketing hour. That's it. It's easy. Sit down and do it. Job done. Um, so to ma mark out and measure out your marketing hour each day of the week, what am I going to be doing? And it makes it very easy for you to then just continue and get it done. Uh, I said good morning, Anthony Jones, didn't I? Okay, so next thing we're going to take a look at, guys. Oh, and it's popular the wrong way around. Okay, but the next thing we're going to look at, guys, is citations. Um, and we've alluded to that already when we're talking about name, address, and phone number because citations are literally anywhere that your name, address, and phone number is listed on the web. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's a link back to your website. A citation can just be a mention of you, your address, your business without having a link back. It's nice if there's a link back. It's good if there's a link back. Uh, it helps if there's a link back. But you can have listings out there that do not have a link, but simply list your name, address, and phone number. And you need to make sure that these citations, and we've alluded to that when we're talking about the address being key for SEO, you need to make sure that these citations are correct. So anywhere that you are listed, anywhere that there are uh, listings of your name, your address, or phone number, whether it's on uh, sites that we've created, like the Rated Local Electrician, or Gary's um, listing, My Local Electrician, Yelp, uh, 192, uh, Free Index, all of these places will have what we call citations. All of these places where your address, name, and phone number are listed, you need to make sure that you are aware of where they are and that you are making sure that they are all identical. I told you I would tell you about a tool that would help you with citations. Um, and that tool is a thing called moz.com. Write this down, guys. moz.com. When you go to uh, moz.com and you pop in your address, your company name, uh, your address, and your postcode, and then you hit the check now button, what moz.com will do is it will trawl through the web and it will come up with every case that it finds of this. So, of course, the advice to you is you take the address exactly as you have it in the Google My Business listing, because it should be the same across the board. Take it exactly as it is in the Google My Business listing, and then you post it into this uh, moz.com. Um, now, there is a paid level to Moz. You can use the free part, okay? The free part will give you enough information uh, to, to do it. So you want to go to the free listings uh, on moz.com, uh, local listings, and uh, check your online presence. As simple as that. So put your name, the business name, the address, and the postcode in. Hit the Check Now button, and it will return you a report that looks something like this. And it will tell you... Uh, how many uh, listings are missing, how many are incorrect, and how many are correct. Now, when it says how many are missing, it's going against a predetermined list of places that it believes you should be listed that would help you. Now, that to me, I think, is gold, because what you can do then is go through, find where these places are that it believes you should be, and then make sure you have a listing on that place. Because if it believes you should be there and you're not there, then by putting yourself there, you're going to help yourself on the listings. Making sense? Thumbs, hearts, smiley faces if it's making sense. Guys, I, I know I keep saying it, but every time I say something that you think, ah, you know, you get a little bit of a gold moment there, let's see some thumbs, hearts, and smiley faces because it helps me to, to see uh, where the learning points are, where you're picking up uh, some good information from this. So what I've actually done uh, intentionally here, guys, if you notice, I have incorrectly put, Anthony's address in by simply uh, making a lowercase Wandle Electrical Services here, just to prove to you uh, how pernickety the uh, Google searches and the Google bots can actually be. Okay, so and as a result of that, what um, what has happened? What has occurred is that it has returned, and I know uh, Anthony has relatively better listing than this if you put the correct details in. Um, 
Watch return is 81 uh, areas he's missing from. In other words, he cannot find them. Uh, 19 incorrect. And remember, it's measuring correct and incorrect based on the information I've given it. So the fact that I've put in a lowercase w here, it tells me that I've got 19% incorrect entries. This is where it's reading from. Okay, If you put the details in incorrectly here, you'll get an incorrect response back. Got it? So put the details in here as you want them to be found. It will tell you then what you need to correct. Okay? So you get the results and you have a look and you think, okay, I need to improve it. Now you can hit the improve with Moz local. Uh, click that button and you'll be taken through to a paid part of the system where you can put in your details, pay your fee. I don't even know how much it is, guys. You pay your fee uh, and then it will populate and upload uh, your details based on the information you've given it and the fee that it's, it's going to charge you for doing it. Or you can do it the manual way, join your marketing hour, you can be, work on a budget, and you can go through because below that it will give you a list of the, uh, the um, citations where you appear or where you should be appearing and you're not, uh, and it will tell you what is wrong with those listings. Okay. So if it's got a red highlight here, it's telling you that something's wrong. Now, this is wrong because it's got the capital W in the actual listing, which is correct. But I put the lowercase in to try and demonstrate to you uh, how it would appear when they're wrong. Uh, what I didn't realize was that there are some places where it's not even showing up. Okay, So it's showing here in the red where there are errors and you need to correct them. Uh, it's showing here it, it, he should be appearing on Foursquare, but he's not appearing on Foursquare. So all you need to do is click on the Foursquare icon, go and claim your listing on Foursquare, put a listing on there, put your details in there, <coughs> and register it. Job done. It's showing here that on Bing, uh, the, it's an incorrect listing. That, again, is probably because I put the lowercase uh, w in. But you need to make sure that if there's red, it's showing that there's an issue. Correct the issue. And all you have to do to correct the issue is click on the link, follow it through. And, guys, like I said, build this into your marketing hour. So you sit down and you do two or three of these during your marketing hour, and you will, in time, correct your listing. You will climb up that Google My Places listing, uh, Google My Business listing, and you'll be doing a lot better as far as being found on the web is concerned. Uh, one big concerning thing for me, Anthony, and I know you're there looking, but one of the big concerning things for me here is it's saying you're not found at all on Facebook. Don't understand why that might be. I would go back and check and look at your Facebook listings, check the address that you have registered, not just the one you have on the face of your Facebook, but the one you have you, your Facebook listing registered on, Okay, where you put in your private details and you register yourself on Facebook, but double check all of that. Um, so yeah, it goes to all the various citations. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to scroll down a page that doesn't exist. I'm actually on a slideshow. Ha! The page is actually on the web. So yeah, go down through all of these and go through your listings. It will list all of the citations where you should appear. It will show you all of the places where you uh, should appear. Uh, and then you can correct them all and make sure that they are they are working for you. Uh, another tool that you can use is a tool called whitespark.ca, best citations by city. That's another tool out there. So get, again, guys, get a pen, write these down. These are little tips that your competition, hopefully, are not using, not finding. Uh, but whitespark.ca, best citation by city, um, UK, and then uh, where I have the XXX, that would be your city. So for me, I'll type in Chatham or uh, Medway. For you, you type in, I don't know, London or Bristol or Devon, whatever it is. You type in the, the, uh, the name of your local city, the closest city to you or the closest big town to you. Um, and then that will take you to a page like this. And it will give you a list of all of the local citation sites, all of the, the ones that are relevant. So, that, so before with Moz.com, it was checking UK-wide. Here now it's going to check and it's going to go through your local listings. Um, and what it will do is tell you all of the best ones that are in your local area. Now, there'll be some common ones there like the yellow pages. There'll be the common ones like, uh, I don't know, in this case, TripAdvisor, yellow pages, LinkedIn, um, Check a Trade. There'll be a lot of common ones that will come up for everybody. But then you'll get some of the local ones as well, like maybe Medway Fair Trader and, and stuff like that. So you'll get local listings as well as the, the, the common ones. But this is a good place. Again, join your marketing hour. You sit down, you pick away at it. Don't you have to sit in and go, I've got to do all of this. Do them one at a time. And by just clicking on the link here, it will take you to the page. 
upload your listing or claim your listing uh, and make sure it is the same as your NAP, same as the, the listing on Google My Business, which will help you to rank. Guys, hopefully this is making sense. You can't drive this home uh, enough to you. Okay, so some of the ones that may not appear in any of these searches are going to be the industry-specific ones, but these need to be the same as well, guys, and you have control over this also. When I say industry-specific ones, I'm talking, of course, about your registration with the NIC or NAPIT, if you're registered with NAPIT, uh, the Stroma or which trusted traders, or indeed any of the Trustmark sites that you are registered with. You will have a listing with Trustmark as well or... Um, uh, maybe you're in a local, I think I've mentioned it already, like, like our local one was the Medway Fair Trader Scheme. So any any of these industry-specific um, sites that you are listed on or you can be searched on or you can be discovered on, you need to make sure that these listings are all the same as well, that these listings are the very same as your NAP on your, um, on your Google My Business listing. So, guys, that's what I've got for you this morning. Hopefully, you have learned from that this morning. Hopefully, you have gained some uh, insights from that this morning. And you will implement. Put this stuff to work, guys, because I'm telling you, your competition isn't doing it. If your competition isn't doing it, you will climb up above them as far as these Google listings are concerned. This doesn't cost you anything apart from your time. OK, yes, the citations, you will have to put the citations out onto these free uh, listing websites. Yes, they will probably phone you and say, uh, we notice you've accessed your site, you've upgraded your listing or you've done this, you've done that. We Can we interest in you in a paid listing? Forget it. You don't need the paid listing. OK, you do not need to pay on a uh, on one of these sites. Keep the, the free one, utilize the free one, make use of the free one, optimize the free one, uh, get it matching your your google my uh, business listing uh you will have the the phone calls and hopefully if you're using a va they'll filter out those calls for you anyway um but that's that's the the cost of getting this right guys you know the people who shy away from this because they go oh i'm not going to do that because i'm going to get harassed and i'm going to get called and this that and the other forget that you, you'll have that anyway just live with it you know no sorry i'm not interested i don't want to do a paid listing goodbye um and and live with it or block their number or let a VA handle it, whatever. Accept it as the cost of doing business. Accept it as the cost of getting your ranking up. It will happen, okay? Uh, be prepared for it. But it's so worth doing to get you ranked high. As I said, your competition is not doing it. And if they're not doing it, guys, you will get up into that three-pack quite easily. This is about effort. It's not about uh, being the best at SEO. It's not about being, um, you know, paying the most for adverts or advertising. This is just about the effort that you put in to getting your listing right. Hopefully, you've enjoyed this this morning. Hopefully, you've had some good uh, value from this this morning. Um Next week, we are going to take a look at Google reviews. Uh, I get a lot of questions from time to time from people saying, how can I get people to do Google reviews? Well, we're going to go through a few tips on that. We're going to go through some tips on how to uh, optimize your Google reviews because all of this helps with your Google My Places listings as well. Um, what the recommendation is that you should have, uh, what helps you to get up into the three-pack is to have a minimum of five. But we're going to go into that in detail uh, next week. Of course, you want more. The more you have, the better it is. Um, but we're going to look at Google reviews next week in our Wake Up Wednesday. Um, all going well. So be ready and be tuned in for that. Guys, I'm going to go through now and see if you guys have any questions. I'm going to see if there's any further comments. Uh, and then we're going to call it a day. Uh, hopefully, as I said, you've had some value out of this morning. And guys, you know, for me, the value for me is when I see you guys implementing. When I see you implementing. And also, guys, when you implement, I want to hear some results. I want you to post in the group. You know, go back and have a look. Where am I now ranking? Uh, having implemented this last week, having implemented this this week, what? where am I now ranking? How are things shaping up? What's happening? Have Has my listing climbed? And post it in our group. Post it and let people know, let other members know that, you know what, by me doing a little bit, by me creating a bit of effort and that time to do this, it has helped. I'm getting further up the rankings, and as a result, I'm getting calls, so on and so forth. Uh, and then other people will be encouraged to follow suit. Um, wonderful. Right, where were we? I think I said Russell had joined. Uh, Steve, Anthony Jones had joined. Great. Uh, Dan McAdam is off. Uh, it was great having you here again, sir. I'm, I'm really appreciative of the support that you give our um, our uh, little community. 
Uh, Mark Francis has joined. Uh, morning to you, Mark. You've missed a big chunk of it, I'm guessing. But this is going to be live now for the next hour or so. So you can actually go back and play this over again. Or the fact that people were here this morning, if you've been here and you've missed some of it, uh, email me or private message me and I'll send you a link. Don't post it here. Don't post your request here. Don't post it in the group. Uh, if you want a copy of this, either email me or private message me and I will send you a link to the um, to the posting. Uh, Mark Scott said, wow, 88% missing on mine. My Google is good though. Uh, cool. Well, imagine what you'll do when you sort out the 88%, my friend. Hey. Eh? Uh, you, you'll be really shining. Uh, perfect. Anthony Jones, this is great, James. We'll be looking at moz.com today. Uh, how do you spell it? M-O-Z. M-O-Z. Single Z. M-O-Z dot com. Uh, perfect. Uh, James, it's worth, James Robbie, it's worth mentioning that if you are already, if there already is a listing, then you need to claim edit instead of creating a new one. Absolutely. Um, yeah. That, and, and that goes for the Google My Business, which I think is what you're referring to, James. Google My Business. And you're right, I should have emphasized this because uh, we've had cases of this in the toolbox previously. But that goes for Google My Business as well as all of your free listings. Don't create new listings. Do not create. Thanks for reminding us of this, James. Do not create new listings. Claim the existing listing and update the listing. Um optimize or update the listing but do not create a second a second listing uh, for your business um, if if you have a business that was at a previous address claim that and update rather than creating brand new listings uh, James is co completely correct Google does not like to see duplicated content uh, anywhere so make sure that you claim any existing listing whether it's on a free um, citation site or particularly with your Google My Business listing. Um, thank you for that, James. Um, Darren Ecton says he was 87% missing. Excellent. See, and, and the nice thing about it is you just click on the link. You don't even you don't even go search. You just click on the link. Once you've done the search, uh, you click on the link and it'll take you to the citation and you can fill in the uh, fill in the blanks. Perfect. Um, <laughs> Darren's getting mom.com. Okay, not sure what's going on there, my friend. Uh, good luck with that. Uh, Martin Scott says, I've got 33 reviews and it hasn't made the slightest bit of difference. Ah, we're going to have a look at reviews. We are going to have a look at reviews, as I said, next week. And there are specific things that you do with reviews to help them make your listing uh, good. And it's also in conjunction with other things. It's not just the, the review on its own. Um, if your listing is crap, not saying it is, Martin, but if your listing is crap, if, you're, if all of your citations are wrong, if um, there are issues with the duplicate copy or anything like that, then it will it pushes the reviews down. Reviews as a standalone won't do the job. They've got to do it in conjunction with other stuff, but we're going to go into that in detail uh, next week. We're going to look at that in much more detail next week. Uh, getting reviews I find difficult, so next week she'll help. Yes, we will be looking at, like everything, guys, there's effort that has to go into this, but we will be looking at a couple of tips on how you can actually encourage reviews from your customers. Not only that, but how you can encourage genuine, good reviews from your customers. Um, Connor's off to have a look at most.com. Good. Enjoy, my friend. And implement, implement, implement. Uh, added a Google review link to my invoice emails. Good idea. We'll be talking about that next uh, next week. Matt West has joined. Matt, we're just wrapping things up. So uh, thank you for joining us. Um, if there are any other questions, guys, over the next couple of seconds, type in your question. Get your question in. Other than that, I'm going to wrap things up. Uh, I'll remind you again, if you have been here, particularly Matt has just joined, if you have been here this morning but you've missed the uh, presentation then it's going to be live on here for about an hour or so after an hour or so i'm going to remove it it will come down um but then if you want a copy of this and you have been here this morning the only rule is you have to have been here at some point this morning um then if you want a copy of this then email me or private message me don't post it here don't post it in the main group email me or private message me on facebook and i will send you a link to the video once we render the video and once we get it up onto um the video hosting site so hopefully guys you've had some value out of that this morning if you have i'd love to see some uh, thumbs some smiley faces 
some hearts going up across the page as I play you out with uh, the music this morning. Uh, just keep those thumbs, keep hitting it and, and flashing those things up because all of that helps to cheer me up of a Wednesday morning. I love to see it. So what I'm going to do, guys, is bid you all good morning and uh, hope you enjoy your day. Don't work too hard. Work hard, but don't work too hard. Enjoy things. Take it easy, guys. I'll uh, talk to you all again very, very, very soon. Mm -hmm.